In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can create this cute little inchworm from scratch using Procreate and the iPad. Just like all my videos, it's in real time, so you can follow along every single step of the way without any edits or time lapses. And if you do follow along, share your work online for a chance to see your artwork featured in one of my upcoming videos, just like the great artists that you see here that followed along with my last video all about how to draw the seahorse. But today, it's all about the inchworm, so let's jump into it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and draw a cute little inchworm. Starting out, I'm using a 4,000 by 4,000 300 DPI canvas. It's an RGB canvas. For my brushes in this video, I'm gonna be using my texture pack for Procreate. The link for that is down in the description below. We're gonna switch back between a few different brushes today, all in that same pack. And then for my color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made, so if you wanna download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's video, you can find that for free on my website, bjdell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page, which is linked down below as well. And then finally, on my Apple Pencil is the Pro Draw Grip. Pro Draw Grip gives you more comfort and better line control. It's a grip that I created and launched last year, which we just started offering on amazon.com. So if you wanna pick one up with free two-day prime shipping, the link's down in the description below for that too. So let's go ahead and get started. So to begin with, I'm gonna come up here to my color palette and I'm just gonna choose this first green color here. And for the brush, we're gonna start out with the feather crosshatch. I'm gonna up the size of this. Let's try uh, maybe 60% and see the size. That's way too big. So let's drop that down maybe to 30. We'll try that, there we go. Still a little big. Let's go down to about 17. And I've got the opacity turned all the way up on this. And that's pretty good there. We want this kind of rough edge around here to give the fuzzy feeling to the inchworm. So getting that size right is really important to make sure that we just have that subtle fuzz on the edges there. We don't want it coming out too far. All right, once we get the circle built up then, we are good. Let me pull back here so we can kind of see. I'm going to move this down with the arrow just a little bit. Because I do want to put some antenna on him later. So I get that where I want it to and we'll lock it in. Now I'm going to come up here to my layers menu and I'm going to make a new layer on top of this layer one. I'm going to tap this and we're going to set this as clipping mask. So this allows us to color in on this layer two and it's only going to show up on the parts that we just colored in on layer one. So now that we've got that set, I'm gonna come back up to my color palette here. I'm gonna go ahead and select this green color here, the second one in. We'll select that. Coming back to the brush library, I'm gonna come down here and let's go ahead and use sand to start giving this some shadows here. And here I think I'll have the light source coming in from this top left-hand corner. So we'll kind of shade here on this right hand side and just kind of make this more three-dimensional once again just kind of test out the size here go a little bit higher this at about a 60 61 and opacity about 17 or 18 percent just going to start building up on the outside here just going real light to get this value built up you see it starts to give it that three-dimensional quality Going heavier down on this back side where the majority of the shadow is. And then lightening up towards the top there. Now I'm gonna come back up here and select this darker green color now. Use that and start to darken up that back edge. All right. Now that we've got that, I'm gonna come back up to the color palette, select the yellow here. We'll start to bring in some yellow where our light source is coming in from. I'm gonna make this just a tad bit bigger here. Go up to about 90 so percent. Start to blend this in. We got this nice sphere going on here that looks Pretty 3D. I'm gonna switch over to this kind of off-white color here. 
just add a little bit of that highlight there at the top. Okay, now that we have this done, I'm going to go up here to my layers menu. This one's already selected because it's blue in color, so we're going to slide this one to the right as well. So now they're both selected. We're going to go ahead and group these. Now we're going to start using this to form the rest of the body. So selecting new group, I'm going to slide this to the left, and then I'm going to duplicate it. Then I'm going to come down to the bottom one, select that, grab my arrow here with uniform selected. I'm just going to grab in from the side here and make a smaller version of this one. Now with that group selected, I'm going to slide to the left again, duplicate that one. Grab new group, shrink this one down, pull it down and behind. Now as I'm going smaller with these, we're going to start to have a little bit of a blur if we keep duplicating the same one. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the top one and drag it down now. Grabbing the arrow again, shrinking it down. And then we'll duplicate that one once more. Grabbing the bottom one, back to the arrow. Get a final single small one down here at the end. All right, so there we go. So that's gonna be the basic shape then of our worm. Next up, let's go ahead and kind of define these a little bit more. Now that they're setting on top of each other, we need to kind of fine tune some of the, the highlights and shadows here. So. Let's come back up here on our, let's actually go with this one right here, the second one down. We'll start on that one. So on that layer two clipping mask, we're going to come back up here and then I'm going to grab black here. Still using on sand. Actually, let's switch over now for this. Let's switch over to... Let's go ahead and use paper for this one so we don't lose all the texture there. This will kind of just darken it up a little bit. Let's again get in the right size here. So we've got this set to about a 22 is pretty good. So I'm just going to come in underneath. Where those are and darken up. So we're going to come down here to the next one, drop in the size as we go down to. Darken in that one, down to the next one. Pull this one down and around the bottom here. And this is why that we didn't do this type of shading on this first one, because as this twists and turns, we want to shade independently. So we have everything realistic as far as the way that the shadows are going to fall. All right. I'm going to come back to this one and this one and add a little bit more down here too. So if we come back to this third one down, pull just a little bit down here. Once again, just really subtle. We're not going too dark with this. We'll do the same thing on the one above here. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch back to this yellow and kind of pull in a little bit of a highlight here. On that edge, do the same thing on the one underneath here, just a little bit of yellow there in the center. And I think we're good on the other two. So basic shapes done as well as the basic shading. We're going to come back in and do a little bit more here at the top once we add in some more details. So let's go ahead and move on to the facial features next. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here to get going. And we'll come up here to the layers menu. I'm going to tap on new group here at the top. 
very top. We're gonna make a new layer on top of that. That's not clipped to anything. It's just sitting on top of everything else that we have. With that selected, I'm gonna come up here to my color palette, choose this kind of off-white color. And then we're gonna draw the eyes, so I'm gonna to switch to a different brush here. I'm gonna use this texture grain inking brush, and we'll drop this down pretty low here as far as size goes. I just wanna do an oval here, drag and drop and fill it in. Now, if you're getting an edge on your fills here, I'll show you. Maybe. If you're getting an edge like this, it means your color drop threshold isn't turned up high enough. So when you drag and drop a color in, you need to hold down with your Apple Pencil or your finger and then slide to the right and you'll see that starts to fill in. If you go too far, it's gonna fill in absolutely everything on your canvas and you know you pushed it to the limit. So you want it just to the edge before it fills in the entire canvas. All right, so there's the start of the eye. Let's go ahead and change the shape of this a little bit. So I'm going to grab my arrow here and I'm going to use warp. And then we're going to start to kind of pull the edges of this down. I want the bottom just a little bit more flat. We'll have the top a little bit more pointed. So it's almost kind of like a teardrop shape rather than just a basic oval. And once you're satisfied with that, you just tap any of the tools to lock it in. Then I'm gonna grab the arrow again, select freeform here, just kind of drag it to where I want it, changing the size a little bit. You can even change the direction it goes here by rotating. And once you're happy with that, just tap it to lock it in. All right, coming back up to the layers menu then, I'm gonna slide this one to the left and I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna grab the arrow here, and then I'm gonna flip this one horizontally, and we'll bring this one over to the right-hand side. You'll see here I've got snapping turned on, so you can see those three lines show that this is parallel with that, and it lines up. Now that we've got those done on the layers menu, you can just pinch those together. I'm gonna to make a new layer on top now. And then we're gonna tap this one and set this as clipping mask as well. All right, so let's go ahead and add in some shadows here to the eyes. So coming back up to my color palette, I've got this kind of peach color here. That's gonna be our base. We're gonna use these three different ones to kind of build out that shadow just like we did with the body. So with that selected, I'm gonna come back up here to my brush library and let's go down. For this one, let's use paper. And once again, size, I've got to see where we're at size-wise. I think this is pretty good. I'm about at 10% here. I'm just going to build up around the edges here. Once again, just to give that three-dimensional feel here. We'll do the same thing here on this side. I want the eyes to look a little bit different and not totally symmetrical here as far as the shading goes. So that's why I went ahead and duplicated this one first before adding in the shadows, just so it doesn't look cookie cutter. Once we've got that done, let's go back up here. Let's use this kind of burnt umber color here. Start to build it up a little bit more. Same thing here on the right hand side. And if you go too far up or you don't like the look of it, you can always select the eye color here and just pull back a little bit. All right, back up to the color palette again. Get this really dark color now. We'll start to come around the edges again with that. I think we'll come back in with this once we get the head here shaded in a little bit more to make these eyes pop. But before we get too drastic with this color, I just wanna do the bare minimum right now, and then we'll come back in. All right, now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and let's make a new layer on top of here. So we'll start working on the, the irises and the pupils now. 
With that done, I'm going to come up here to my color palette, switch over to this blue color we've got. Back to my brush library, and we're going to come back to that texture grain inking brush here. And then let's go ahead and make a circle. Our oval, hold it down the Apple Pencil and down again with our finger. Locks it into a perfect circle. We can drag and drop that color. Back here to the arrow. Getting it exactly where I want it. I think that looks pretty good there. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this one to the left now and duplicate it. Grabbing the arrow again, we'll move it over here, making sure those three lines pop up. And lock it in. Now with our layers selected, I'm going to go ahead and pinch those together to merge them. Or if you're having problems pinching, you can always tap the top layer. Brings up the layer menu here and you can just merge down. And now those are all on the same layer. Works the same way as pinching. All right, another new layer here for the pupils then. Back to our color palette. I've got this dark, dark blue here off to the side. We'll use that. Holding down again, locking it in, and dragging and dropping the color. Grab the arrow here. Get this where we want it to go. All right, there we go. Slide to this to the left and duplicate it. And bring this over to the right eye. All right, there we go. So now we can pinch those together or tap and merge down. So the eyes now, we've got four different layers. We've got the base, we've got the shadows here, the irises, and then the pupils. Which actually, I think I want to move this one a little bit. As I look at it now, it's a little bit there off to the side, to the left, not really centered, so that looks a little better. Okay, so now let's start working on the shadows and highlights here. I'm going to zoom in so we can see here. We're going to go ahead and select the iris here. I'm just going to tap this one and we're going to set this as alpha lock to save some layers. So what alpha lock does, just like clipping mask, it's only going to show up on the blue. However, this is actually going to be on the same layer as the blue. So it's destructive. If you erase here, you're going to erase the blue, but it's a good way to free up some layers if you're starting to, to run out of space. So with that selected as alpha lock, let's go back up to our colors palette and we'll choose that dark blue color that we used for the pupil there. Back to the brush library and I'm going to switch here to that paper again. Probably drop the size of this down to maybe six. Let's see where that's at. That's pretty good. So I'm just going to go around the bottom here and the sides. Start to darken this up a little bit. And you can see I'm outside of this. So I've got a lot of control over how far that brush goes into where I'm painting. That's a good thing too with Alpha Lock is since we don't have to worry about coloring out here, we can start our stroke out there and build it up slowly without worrying about coloring on that white. We'll do the same thing over here on this one. idea here is just kind of building up this three-dimensional look. All right. And once we've got that then, I'm going to come back up here to the color palette and select white. We'll drop down the size of this down to about a three. We'll start to pull some white around that edge. Same thing over here. See, I'm being pretty careful with this. Not going super fast, just slowly building it up. The patience with this is, is kind of key just to get the right look that you're going for. I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger and we'll start to pull in a little bit of a highlight here. 
top edge. Drop it down some more here. And just like that. All right, back up to our layers menu. Let's go ahead and select the pupils now. I'm gonna tap that and we'll go ahead and once again set this one as alpha lock. That same white here. Make this about a three. We'll start pulling a little bit of highlight around here. Right. That looks good. Back up to our layers menu again. I want to make another new layer on top of here. And let's go ahead and use, we can use that same paper for this. I'll drop this down a little bit and get some highlights here. on the iris and the pupil itself. All right, that looks good. We'll pull them back out. You can kind of see where we're at here. Back up to the layers menu one more time. We can go ahead and combine. Actually, we can go ahead and combine all of the eyes now. They're gonna all be on one here. And let's make one last kind of highlight across. So with our layers menu open here, let's make another new layer on top of the eyes. We're gonna tap this one and we're gonna set this as clipping mask. I'm gonna come back up here and change over to the texture grain inking brush. I'm just gonna pull in kind of a curve line here. Just to kind of give a shine to these eyes. Get this all connected and drag and drop the color in there to fill it in. And drag and drop. And then back up to the layers menu. I'm going to use the end here to open up the opacity menu or the opacity bar. And we'll drop down the opacity of this down to about 30%, I think, looks pretty good. And then. I'm going to come back up here to my adjustments menu. I'm going to use Gaussian Blur and just blur this just a tad bit. So we'll slide to the right. I don't want to get too blurred, maybe about 1% because we are going to blur the eyes too. So now that that's done, let's pinch those together. So all the eye layers are on one now. We're going to come back up to Gaussian Blur and blur this at about 2%. Two, maybe three. Let's go two. All right. So there we go. We've got the eyes done now. Finally, here with the eyes, we're going to grab these. Holding down, we're going to drag them underneath our head layer. And they're gone. We can't see them because they're behind this. So with that selected, we want to tap the eyes to bring up the side menu. We want to hit select. And then coming back up to the layers, we want to tap on our head layer, open the menu here, and we want to hit clear. So what this does then, as you can see here in the thumbnail, it removes the eyes, the shape of the eyes from the head layer. So the eyes are actually underneath the head. This is going to allow us to make this look a little bit more realistic and we'll be able to draw some of this kind of fuzzy fur on top of the eyes since they're underneath. So pulling back, you can kind of see what we're left with. All right, so let's go ahead and work on that fuzzy eye part that I was talking about. So let's zoom in here. We want to be on the head layer here, and then we want to go back up here, and we want to use that same green base color that we used for the head. And then I'm going to switch back to that feathered crosshatch. And now here, I'm just going to come around the sides of the eyes. I just need to get the right size here. So I want this fur to come out and I don't want it to be too much or come out too far. I just want a nice little fuzz to this. So we 
I'm just going to start to pull around here. Once again, you can see I'm really far over here on the edge. I'm not really close to the eye right now because I've got more control over how far those come out. Alright, so we've got that one done. Let's go over here and do the same thing now. So you're just going back and forth to kind of paint this in and build it up. little too far. I'm going to drop this down just a tad bit. All right, pulling back out to see what I'm left with here. I think I'm going to pull this around a little bit more. I didn't do too much over here. back you can kind of see what we have there it's subtle can't really see too much there but it is there so if you zoom in and you get really kind of curious with the pixels here it is going to add to it and you're going to see it a lot more too once we go in and add in the shadows here which we'll do next so that's it for that step let's go ahead then and we'll move on to the next one let's go up to our layers menu here and we'll go ahead and make a new layer on top of this head, which automatically sets to a clipping mask. Colors, let's go back up here and let's go ahead and use, we're going to build up with this dark green first. With that selected, we're going to use paper again here. About 6%, we'll see where we're at with that. No, let's do maybe a 10 We're going to slowly build this up. Now, this doesn't have the look that I'm going for right now. So what we need to do is we need to drag this on top of the layer two. And you're going to see how this is going to change. Just that immediately starts to look different there. I'm going to drop the size of this down to about a six or a seven here. Start to build up some shadows around the eye here. It's going to help to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And you see here, the eye's poking through a little bit too much back here. So to fix that, what I need to do is just come back to my head layer here. And if I switch back to that original green, I can come in here. If I switch back then my brush to the feather crosshatch, drop the size a little bit, I can cover that up a little bit more. Just kind of fine tune it. And this is where once we start darkening this up, you can kind of see how those are starting to poke through a little bit more. You can see a lot better when it's a darker green across there. All right. Pulling back then, you can kind of see where we're at now. Let's continue on here, back to that dark green color and back to the paper. Get the edges of this here. Whoops. On the wrong layer. those build up and that's starting to really look like it's coming out of the head now that's what we're going for all right back here to the color palette let's use this yellow here I'm gonna start to come in and around with a smaller size now maybe a three eh, four come 
around the bottom of the eyes here. Slowly building that up. And then back to that green color here. And adjusting the size a little bit higher. Just going a little light underneath these just to build them out just ever so slightly. Okay. So we got the eyes looking like they're coming out. So we're doing well here. This is where then we're going to come back in on the eyes and kind of darken up a little bit. So back to layer 16 here. And with that darker color here, we're just going to hit some of these side edges a little bit more where it meets the head there. This kind of just makes them pop even more, pronounces that effect that we've got going on. All right, looks good. Pulling back, you can kind of see what we've got there. I'm going to blend this one in a little bit more where that comes in, though. So if we go in here, I'm going to select this color here and just hold down just slightly kind of paint over this so it's not as drastic with that glare coming in there. Kind of pull that back just a little bit as well. All right, looks good. Let's go ahead and work on the mouth now. So back up to the layers menu. At the very top here, let's go ahead and make a new layer on top of here. Coming back to my color palette, let's go ahead and use this dark green for the mouth. We'll use that same paper to draw maybe a 2%. Let's see what we're left with here. I'm not sure. It looks pretty good. So we'll just do just a regular basic mouth here. Just a line across there. Some dimples here to the side. And then let's go ahead and drop the opacity of this just a little bit. If we go to end to blend mode. The opacity down just a little bit and I think that looks pretty good okay so now we're ready to make this pop a little bit more let's go here you can just use that same layer that we used for the eyes here we'll select our color palette let's go to the yellow again still with that paper here we're gonna go on the bottom lip here start to build that up Again, just a really light pressure, up in this to about a 4% now. Now back to that darker green, I'm making this about a 5 now, 5 or a 6. We'll build up a little shadow here underneath the lip. And then bring in the shadow a little bit more here around the dimples. So those come out, build a little bit of a shadow here. And then coming back here to yellow, we'll kind of bring in a highlight here to define that a little bit more. And we can even bring that up in between the eyes there. So you can see now, really starting to bring home the feeling of that three-dimensional quality. All right, looks good. Let's go ahead now and add in some color to the cheeks here. So I've got this kind of pinkish color here. We'll use that. And let's go ahead and make a new layer on top of this current one here with that same brush. Start to pull in some ovals here on the cheeks just to give those a little bit of color you can even pull in just a little bit of color there on the lip maybe across here too just to rosy that up just a little bit pulling back you can kind of see what we're left with there all right let's go ahead now and add in some antennas here so let's go down to the very bottom here let's make a new layer and we'll drag this down underneath. 
if you have an older iPad or an iPad that doesn't have as much RAM as this iPad Pro that I'm using and you're starting to run out of layers, you can always combine some of these to save some space. So feel free to do that. If you're running out of layers, you can group these. We are going to come back in and just do a little bit of tweaking at the end, but uh, you can still combine them if, if you need to. All right, so with this selected, let's go ahead and still use that paper to draw this. I'm going to use this green here on the color palette. So if you select that, then we'll zoom in here so we can see a little bit better. Let's draw an oval here, holding down to lock it in to a circle. And then let's make another new layer underneath this one. So we'll drag this down underneath. Roll the base of the antenna there. Okay. Now that we've got those, we can slide both these to the right here. We can group these. So we've got a new group again. And we can slide this group to the left to duplicate it. Grabbing the arrow here and flipping horizontally. We'll slide that over here and lock it in. All right. So let's start with this one here now. We're going to go ahead and alpha lock. This one, coming back up to our colors, we'll use this dark green here. Zooming in a little bit. We'll start to build up. Let's get in the three-dimensional shape to this. Coming back here then and selecting the yellow. Hitting the edge. And kind of bringing it down towards the center. I'm going to go a little bit bigger here. You can see I'm just kind of blending it to make the transfer of those values believable. Then we'll go in with a little bit of white. All right. Now underneath, we'll select this one. Once again, alpha lock. Let's go ahead and use that same dark green here. Shrinking our size down to about a two. Start to pull in the shadow underneath and along this back side. Just like that. All right. And I think honestly, this is going to be the one that I'm going to redo here on this right side. I think I can use this same one on the right. So I'm going to delete that one. Let's duplicate this one and we'll pull it up here. And with the arrow, we can drag it over. Saves us a little bit of time. I didn't want to do the whole thing and then flip because the, obviously if we flip it, which we would need to do because these need to go the opposite direction. But if we would flip this one, then the lighting is going to be completely off. We're going to have the shadows on the wrong side. So we can do it this way. And then we're going to alpha lock the other antenna using that same dark green. Come in here and darken everything up. All right. And then pulling back, you can see what we're left with there. Looks pretty good. All right, finally then, I just want to kind of add a little bit more shadows here into the head. So if we go back to our head layer here, I'm going to make one more layer that automatically sets this clipping mask. And then we'll choose black here. I'm going to start to just add in a little bit more. Since we've already shaded with the darker colors, coming in here with the black is really just going to reinforce those colors that we've already got in there. It's not going to take away or muddy them up too much. That looks good. I'm going to come back in here with some white now. Kind of make some of these highlighted areas pop a little bit more. Do the same thing here, moving down. Pull in a little bit more of a highlight here on this one. All right. And pulling back out, you can kind of see what we're left with there. 
Finally then, I'm gonna come up here to my layers menu. I'm gonna come down to the bottom, make a new layer here, down and underneath. And then I'm gonna select this purple just for a quick background here. We'll just do a, an oval here in the background. Just kind of fill that in there. And then finally with another new layer, I'm just gonna go ahead and sign this and we will be done. So a pretty basic quick little inchworm with some basic shapes and that is our final design. So hopefully you liked today's video. If you did, do me a favor, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos just like this one. And speaking of videos, if you follow along with any of my tutorials, I really recommend you share your work online. If you're on Instagram or Twitter, post it there and tag me at BJ Dell so I can get a chance to check it out and you possibly have a chance to see your artwork featured in one of my upcoming videos just like the people you saw featured at the start of today's video. As for me, I can also be found online, bjdell.com. And that's it for today's video. As always, I appreciate you guys watching, and until next time, keep creating.